Hey everybody, it's Brady and Christy Morcom, Queen of the Jungle, and this is Wild Things. This is our special edition because it's the Memorial Day weekend. We wanted to kick off the grilling season with our friend Mike West, who owns Barbecue Island Outdoor Products. Uh, it, Barbecue Island, by the way, four locations in the valley, and it's the place you need to go. Your headquarters for grilling, smoking, whatever you want to build, they got it all. And today we have another friend that supplied meat for our Wild Things episode because we're talking about what animals like to eat. If they were to grill out, what would a tiger put on his grill? We're gonna talk about that a little bit, but we're gonna eat some protein ourselves and thank Midwestern Meats, Rob McConnell over there for supplying some good stuff. Um, Mike, why don't you give a rundown of what we're uh, cooking today? Uh, today we're gonna do some ribs. Uh, we have uh, uh, chicken breasts. We have some stuffed burgers, I believe, with uh, mushrooms and bacon. We got a cheddar cheese and bacon, one pound stuffed burger. Um, we also have some brats with some hot links, Italian hot links. Uh, also, there's uh, twice baked potatoes out there. Yeah, we've got jalapeno, che jalapeno cheddar, twice baked potatoes, and the one last thing, million dollar bacon. Million dollar bacon from Midwestern Meats. It's a new product, and wait until you get this. It's, uh, I'm gonna go a little foodie on this. <laughs> Pardon me, but it's, it's a pound and a half of bacon and it's about nine slices, so it's triple thickness. And it's marinated in a bourbon, I think there's brown sugar, and you gotta pre-order it, but it's, it, it's really good. We'll get to try it today. Um, so, Mike, tell us what you're prepping the, uh, the meat with. Uh, today we're gonna start with the, uh, the ribs. We're gonna use the um, Killer Hogs, the, his barbecue rub, as well as his buddy Heath Riles, his uh, honey rub. Triple nine swine, it's like a, a glaze that I kind of do in the middle of the cook. So, kind of gives that, that, there's a little habanero in it, and it gives it a little little bite. Here's the other thing I was gonna mention about Barbecue Island, that also has uh, unbelievable selection of uh, rubs and sauces. They're all in the back row, and they in fact, Right now, they're carrying the Brady's Hot Sauce, and it's the only place in the valley that has it available while supplies last, because production has been cut down because of COVID. Stinking COVID-19, but get it while you can. It's the only place in the valley to get the, the hot sauce here, Brady's Hot Sauce. Truffle's good. We're gonna, we're gonna actually use a little of the truffle habanero today on um, um, probably the chicken breast is what we'll go with. But let's get to cooking and let's get to uh, talking about some animals. Let's Christy, do it. Where we, um, and you brought a couple of animals today. I did because the eating habits in the animal kingdom are so fascinating. I'm so excited to teach all you guys the unique things creatures out there are doing when it comes to eating food. Let's let Mike do his thing and Christy and I will do our thing. We're going to bring the animals in. All right, we're back here at Barbecue Islands in Tempe, and this is our Memorial Day Grill Fest. And Christy has brought a couple of creatures from the Wildlife World Zoo. I'm holding Red, who's a blood python, and he uh, Red's probably about, I don't know, 30 pounds. It feels about that. Yeah. And we got Snickle Fritz, the kinkajou. The cutest kinkajou ever. What does Snickle Fritz eat? So Snickle Fritz is an omnivore, so she eats a variety of different fruits, and uh, different protein sources like little creatures, 
um, bugs, eggs, different things like that. So she's pretty opportunistic. However, they get the name Honey Bear because they love honey and she has a very long tongue to help her extract honey from beehives or nectar from flowers. It's like the Gene Simmons of the animal world. <laughs> right? Very long, so a couple inches. So definitely a handy little tongue for where you're gonna find these guys over in South America up in the trees. Totes adorbs. Okay, now let's get to red real quick. I, yes. I figure red will eat rodents. Yeah, absolutely. So snakes can eat things that are three to five times the size of their head. So if you think about that for a second, that would be like us swallowing a watermelon hole, which is really incredible. Well, <laughs> can't say I've done that, but um, the other thing that we talked about were you, you often hear, oh, how come snakes can get that, you know, something that's that much bigger than their mouth in there, and the 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 myth or the misinformation if you hear that the snakes can unhinge their jaws. That is not true, correct? So they actually have really stretchy ligaments that connect their jaws. So they're able to stretch their jaw really wide and then proceed to swallow that animal whole. And I know the other thing about the snakes is they use their tongues. It's the all around sense. They sense whatever is around them. It's their taste bud. It's an, uh, Red has been licking my uh, thumb a little bit, and I joked about, wow, if he sees one of my fingers, it's gonna look like a big pinky. I hope he doesn't go after it. Because <laughs> uh, the uh, python bite and boas and the constrictors, they have the uh, hinged teeth. Oh yeah. That kind of latches on, so you have to go forward and then out if you to get remove something. But the teeth are designed to be able to pull it in. It is, it's designed to not let go. So a lot of people think you don't have to worry about the teeth on a constrictor. However, their teeth are just as sharp, they just don't have venom behind their bite. And it ensures that they don't let go of their prey while they squeeze really tightly with their body until that animal's not moving anymore before they swallow it. Now that we've gotten to know uh, Red here and Snickle Fritz, we're gonna talk about a couple of different animals and what they would put on their grill if they're eating. Uh, that was our whole idea behind this wild things. One of the ones I want to talk about was the giraffe. Oh yes, the giraffes eat a lot of food and they're the tallest land mammal in the world. They can get up to 18 feet tall and you can imagine that an 18 foot animal has to eat a lot of food and it needs a lot of nutrients. I can relate to giraffe because of the <laughs> length of the neck. I have that in common with a giraffe. Um, their neck's a little bit longer than mine. The um, other thing is when you showed me the picture the first time, and when you see it, the giraffes, when they graze on the ground, they spread their legs. They do. They're actually in a very vulnerable position when they graze or when they're drinking water, which is why they don't do it that often. Uh, giraffes prefer to eat from the trees, and they only need to drink water every couple of days. And they get the water they need from the foods that they eat. So the, the for a giraffe, this is what I like about hearing is the three squares a day that we eat, if we're eating three meals or two meals a day, a giraffe on average, poundage, what does a giraffe eat in a day? So a giraffe can eat up to 75 pounds of food a day. It beat me. A lot of food. And what's amazing is they don't have to compete with other creatures out in the wild for the food. Because they're the only ones who can reach in those really tall trees. And so out on the plains, this is what's fascinating is the giraffe is not the champion on the poundage of a daily intake. Um, no. So let's get into that. The champion would be of the ones that we're talking about today. The rhino. And is it the, uh, it would be the, would it be the white rhinoceros? Yes, so the white rhino can eat up to 120 pounds of food a day. Holy grazing. Right? And the white rhino is a grazer. So you have your grazers that eat from the ground and you have your browsers that eat from the trees. The white rhino is sometimes referred to as the square-lipped rhino because they have flat lips that are perfect for grazing. So they eat 120 pounds of grass a day. And at the zoo the first time I fed the white rhinoceros and I did not know the difference that there was a square lip and then the, uh, like a black, black rhinoceros mm -hmm. is more of a pointed lip because they can get more vegetation off of trees or bushes. That's right, so their lips are more prehensile, more pointed. That's gonna help them browse from the trees and bushes and different things like that. 
which leads to leads me to my next favorite animal, which is the South American tapir. They have a prehensile upper lip, little prehensile snout, and they're gonna use that in the same way that the black rhinos do, but it's so prehensile and so long, it looks like a little stubby elephant trunk. They can also use it as a snorkel, and watching a taper eat is probably the cutest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. And they can navigate with that nose around thorns, right? Around like thick bushes or stuff that has thorns. That little thing just that nose, that uh, mini elephant nose, just Absolutely. navigates all around that. 120 pounds of grass a day for the white rhinoceros. That was the one where the first time I fed it, I also said, wow. <laughs> because the, the strength of the lip of that rhinoceros was incredible. Uh, uh, it shocked me the first time I did it. Um, the one animal that we um, mentioned that I've asked you about was the hyena. Um, oh, oh, the other thing about um, giraffes, you told me they will eat bones. So, and a lot of herbivores and mammals will do that. So if their diet is lacking in calcium or phosphates, they'll actually go and chew on a bone and they'll chew on it and absorb all those minerals and it's gonna help complete their diet. It picks up their calcium, right, for mm -hmm. the uh, a giraffe. Now the hyena <laughs> eats everything. Hyenas eat everything, absolutely. So hyenas will eat not only just the meat, they'll eat the horns, they'll eat the bones, and the hooves. I wonder if they go after teeth. Oh, they'll eat everything. No matter what, if it's available, they're, they're eating it. And their digestive system is nothing to mess with. It'll compress, and if they can't digest it, they'll just regurgitate it again, which regurgitating is something in the animal kingdom that happens quite often. So the camel, for instance, has that four-chambered stomach. They'll eat food quickly. If they have to get away, they'll just regurgitate it a little bit. It also helps them process their food again and absorb more of those nutrients and then swallow it again. So sometimes they can get multiple meals out of one meal. They're, they're composters yes. in a way. So like the, the taper is known as the farmer because they eat so many um, seeds. They're fruit. First of all, they, they go after fruit like crazy, right? And so they they're responsible for a lot of uh, the planting, the seed, spreading the seed. Yeah, for seed dispersal. So they are definitely little ecosystem engineers. They go around, they help contribute to all the beautiful trees you're gonna see in South America. And there's so much more to eating in the animal kingdom than what they eat or how much they eat, but sometimes how they eat is just as interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, when I read that thing and you were talking about the taper and how much, I didn't realize how much they spread it around and how important that was, because you always, for years, you heard about you know saving uh, the rainforest or the planting of trees or, or as towns, cities expand, they take it down. You need those guys out there to be able to uh, spread the jungles and maintain it. Absolutely, and there's some creatures that help keep the environment nice and tidy. Uh, a very small creature, but has a pretty amazing story behind them, are the carrion beetles. So the male carrion beetle will go out and he'll seek out a dead bird or a dead mouse, and then he's gonna go seek out a lady. So once he finds a lady, they're gonna bury the little dead mouse or dead bird, they're gonna mate on top of it, and then they're gonna sit back and wait. And as soon as their babies hatch, the whole family feasts on the dead carcass. It's like a twisted uh, necrophilia uh, <laughs> tale in the animal kingdom, but man, that's how they get their ladies, huh? And another way you can get a lady is by being a nursery spider. So the male nursery spiders will go catch a bug, wrap it up, go find a lady. As soon as he does, he'll present the lady with the bug that he caught for her. And while she eats it, he proceeds to mate with her. Wow, well, it looks like Red's on the move here a little bit. He, I think uh, he's smelling all the good food that we're smelling. I, I don't blame him. It's, I'm starting to, uh, we have that in common at least. Um, well, you know, here's what we'll do. Why don't we put the critters back and uh, let's roll out some of the food. Although I could watch Snickle Fritz eat the honey or lick the honey all day long. It's so cute. So sweet. Yeah. I like your plan though. Time to eat. I hope you guys enjoyed our Memorial Grill Fest that we're having and we talked about some cool animals. I know um, Christy did a lot of research and study for it and uh, I wanted to thank 
Barbecue Islands for letting us do it here and oh, look at what they've produced. Mike yeah, has done an unbelievable job. You can see uh, the million dollar bacon over here. We got some baby back ribs. We've got the bacon cheddar stuffed hamburger, twice baked jalapeno cheddar potatoes, uh, the chicken breast with a honey glaze on it, uh, honey mustard glaze. And rather than you watching us eat, I'm trying to do this farewell as long as I can because I know how hungry Christy is right now. Christy, anything else you want to say? I've never wanted to wrap up filming for Wild Things so quickly in the past. I'm so excited to dive in. Well, be looking for us. We got a couple of cool things that we're going to be doing this summer, so we look forward to seeing you soon.